we've seen how we can use props, which are static values and methods that are passed into a component. We're now going to look at state, which is a collection of dynamic data that is managed by our component itself. Let's go ahead and create our component and render it to the DOM. As always, I've got my index.html set up here. Let's go ahead and define a variable. I'm going to call this component name state change. So name state component. And of course, we're going to use the React library. And we're going to use create class, which, as you know by now, takes an object specification. And this must have a render method, which, of course, is a function. And we're simply going to return a div. Inside this div, we're going to have an input of type text. And we're going to have a h1. Hello, my name is. And in curly braces, this.state.name. And let's close that off. So we access state exactly the same way as we access props, this.state, because the state lives on the component itself. Let's close that off and let's render it to the DOM. So react DOM dot render. Hopefully you're getting really familiar with this now. Hope you've obviously built a few components, hopefully starting to stick and really get a good understanding of how this all works. So of course we know that react DOM dot render takes two arguments, first being the component. So name state components, close that off correctly. And the second being the DOM element we're going to render to. So document dot get element by ID and we're going to pass in app. Let's just check this is working. Oh, and we've got an error. Check what the error is. Cannot need read property name of null. Okay, so that's to be expected because we haven't defined a state yet. Let's just delete that and check the component itself is actually going to work. And it is excellent. So we haven't defined state yet. So in the same way with props, we use get default props. We use get initial state for state. Let's go ahead and define our initial state. Now, so this is our function. This is our get initial state method. Don't forget the uh, comma at the end there. And within this, we are simply going to return an object that has our state on it, like so. And we have a name, and it's just going to be blank for now. So just to explain, we've got our component here, which is getting rendered to the DOM. You know that already. We've now got state in this component, which we've created with get initial state, which simply returns an object that has our state. So our state now has name and it's blank. So if we were to console.log, this dot state we're going to see name which is exactly what we want let's check that out oh i've put that in the wrong place move that out of there so there we go so this is our state an object with the name and a value with our component all set up now we're going to change the name value whenever this input changes. Let's just go ahead and clean up the components. Let's get rid of our console.log. So the way that we're going to update our state is using the input. So whenever the input is changed, 
we're going to call a function that updates our state. And the way we do this is using events. So we're going to say whenever our input changes, so we're going to use the on change event. And there's loads of events. Look at the cheat sheet I'm going to give you later on to check out more of these events. So there's on click, on mouse over, etc. Just JavaScript events basically. And all we do is we pass a function into that event. So in our case, it's going to be this dot name changed. And we're going to define name changed on our component in the same way we do with get initial state and with render. So name changed is a function. So whenever input changes, name changed is going to get called. So let's just console.log name changed called. Uh, let's go back over to the component. Let's get, and we can see that whenever I type, that function gets called. So within that function, we can now update our state. Now you might be thinking we could do this with this dot state dot name equals Tim. Never do this. That is very bad practice and very, very, very bad. Never do that. It's going to cause lots of issues. We want to explicitly change our state and we want to use React to do that. And React has a method called set state. So whenever this function gets called, we're going to use this dot set state. And this simply returns an object of our new state. So our state is now going to have the name and it's going to be the value of the event we pass in. So event dot target dot value. Now we actually need to pass the event into the function and obviously that's fairly simple, like so. So all this is doing is that whenever input changes, the name changed function is getting called. That function is called with the event that happened. So in our case, it's going to be a key press. We're then getting that event, the target and the value. So we're getting the, the key that we press down and we're changing the name state to equal that change. Let's have a look at how that works on the component itself. So it's all empty at the moment. The name is blank. Let's go ahead and put Tim. And there we go. So we can see that whenever an on change event happens in our component, our state gets updated and our component gets re-rendered. Let's go ahead and create a button that will reset our state. So let's go ahead and create a button on click event. So this dot reset name. And uh, let's just say reset name and close that off. Let's go ahead and create that function. So reset name, which is a function. And it's simply going to update our state and reset it. So set it to blank. Let's go ahead and check that out. So type my name in and then we can reset our name. You'll notice the input doesn't change because we've not updated the value of the input. So let's just recap state. It's a collection of data managed by the component itself. So we set the initial state and we update the state.
we update the state using events. We simply pass in a function to the event. So on change, on click, we create the function and we use this dot set state to change the state. And this simply takes an object that represents our new state. Now this is one of the great things about React because we can say exactly how we want the state to look at any point. So whenever someone presses a button that changes the input, we can say we want the state to look a certain way. Reset name gets clicked. We can say we want our state to be blank. That's how we want our UI to look, which is brilliant because we can work out exactly how we want our UI to look at a certain point, And then we can easily and clearly create that using a React component and the events and states and functions on it. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed my video, please like, share and subscribe. If you've got any comments, suggestions or ideas for videos, leave them in the comments below. Send me a tweet at Code with Tim or send me an email, codewithtim at gmail.com.